Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Productive Bees, a mod that seems to replicate some old forestry mod favorites, but in a more modern Minecraft. So let's start by saying, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in a crazy looking landscape. This is just a preset of a Minecraft world, but this, this is a lot of bees. Um, yeah, if you're not familiar with the, uh, the old forestry uh, bees and how you could breed them, they were magic bees and stuff like that, um, then you are now going to be made familiar with it. But basically it's the same idea. Whoop, daytime, uh, uh, but <laughs> the, uh, we're going to be using some of the new bees in Minecraft uh, that came out more recently in like the 115 expansion or, you know, updates. So let's get into the beginnings of this and how you can make all these bees basically produce for you any number of different resources so that you don't have to go mining or anything like that. Now you will have to go exploring, capturing and stuff, and there is a, a certain uh, kind of curve to trying to get this stuff to work for you. And there are some restrictions for how you actually can't contain some bees. But there are plenty of things to be learned here. So let's start off with the basics. Yes, there's your basic Minecraft bee stuff going on. You've got your Minecraft bee, they will produce you honey and stuff like that. And you can actually take them and introduce them to neat things. And that is with a bee cage. So if I grab a regular Minecraft bee. Let's let's grab one of these here. It's in the world. You can take one of these bee cages, click on a bee, and you now have it in your inventory. Now I'm in creative, so it just created a duplicate, uh, you know, instead of using that one up, but it would be right here. And then you can now transport this bee someplace else if you so desire, which is pretty darn uh, convenient. This will work for a very large percentage of bees in here, except for those that can teleport. Those ones are a pain than took us. But anyway, uh, let's continue on with how you can therefore use this to your advantage. There are other things that you can do, which by the way, bee cage is just made with some honey and some slabs. If you're not familiar with how to get your basic bee stuff in Minecraft, I recommend checking out a wiki because this is not a, a, a vanilla Minecraft introduction. This is a modded one. So you can then therefore introduce it to such things as this, an advanced oak beehive. These will take a little bit of honeycomb, which you will have had to have sheared an existing, uh, you know, beehive out in the, in the wild. Oh, there's one up there. You can uh, put a campfire underneath it just to prevent the bees from attacking you, to smoke them out and stuff like that. And then you can use a shear on there and you'll probably get some of the honeycomb. Then you can make yourself one of these and you'll need to have a regular Minecraft beehive as well. Hopefully you'll get enough for it in one go. Otherwise you'll have to wait a bit of time for them to have enough honeycomb in there for you to use it. But what good is this? Well, let's, let's actually grab a regular Minecraft beehive, place it down and there you go, right? If I click on it, nothing happens. If I click on an advanced beehive, which by the way, there are different uh, iterations that you can combine with this mod that will further enhance the looks of your different beehives and stuff like that. I recommend checking it out on the link in the description below. You'll, f you'll find a lot of information on that. But anyway, we've got the advanced oak beehive, which therefore it, it is actually interactable. You can open it up and there are like three little slots, a little bottle opening here, an arrow and a bunch of squares. What's all this about? Well, the bees, as they go in and out of the hive, are actually visible now. So if I were to go over here to, let's go to a spot where they don't have any at the door, because I see one right here at the door. Let's go into the this zombie hive. This one should be perfectly safe, right? Well, if I click on here, you can see that there are some zombie bees in here. And then there's this little thing here. This is kind of like a reservoir for honey. If you put a bottle in here, an empty glass bottle, it will then fill up that bottle, boop, just like that. You get a little bit of honeycomb from it as well as any other stuff that they have. Now in this case, the zombie bees are giving off rotten comb. If you have regular Minecraft bees, like the one that I have here with this bee cage, then it'll be a little bit different story. Uh, let's actually put down, I've got an advanced oak beehive here. Yeah. I could probably do this. Let, let's let's just do this right here because we've got, these ones here have no AI. They're not actually going to do anything. But if I put down one of these and I release this bee, let's say right there, it's probably going to want to start getting into these flowers. It might start flying around and hopefully it would come back to this advanced oak beehive. Go in here and then we can start harnessing honey as well as uh, your your comb and stuff for just regular Minecraft stuff. Now on top of that, 
you can enhance this further with an oak expansion box or a, just an expansion box depending upon the uh, expansion mods you have installed this can change its color or tree type or whatever and it will go from three slots to five you can therefore have up to five bees in there and a double stacked uh you know beehive alternately you can just put another beehive above that but yeah anyway if you have multiple different kinds of bees in a location they can easily start switching over going back and forth yeah there we go see this bee went in here and it takes some time for it to actually do this but if you don't have bottles in there uh it'll end up being like you saw over here where you've got like the honey effect going on on the bottle or on the on the the hive itself now other things you can do you can make all sorts of little uh vanilla like bee uh, beehives you know how you can't interact with them there are a lot of them in fact let's look at nests these are things that you can make or find in the wild uh, and they are basically let's grab one of these oak nests here if you look you just take some kind of wooden sword and an oak log and you're putting a hole in it that's pretty much it you place it down it looks like a log but one of the sides has an opening in it and that will let them actually use it as a regular vanilla minecraft hive now I can't click on it nothing happens but it will house one bee that's it no more no less at least as far as my testing has provided I could be inaccurate on any of this stuff hopefully you're all taking it for with a, a little bit of salt but you can see here we've got a few beehives set up in here or nests as it is they come in all the different wood types and there are expansions that allow you to do all sorts of different stuff but different bees will be found or spawned from different hives in this case we've got like the resin bee will be uh, it's strictly found in here now if you have JEI installed which I really do recommend uh, you know if this is what you want then you it will definitely help you out so if I hit R or U on this it will tell you the recipe for it but you can always click on the information tab so this nest will attract bees in any overworld biome so it's just useful in general if I hit U it will say the same thing you know if you click on there but some of these ones are specific and will spawn bees which is different from you putting a nest down so if you find these in the wild only certain bees will spawn from them you can use them for just about any of the other bees so a resin bee a blue banded bee a carpenter bee green with black and a carpenter bee black with green but they're going to town over here uh can all be found pretty much in wooden logs throughout the world you may find some of these bees just flying around if you do see one flying around you're most likely uh going to find one of these nests somewhat nearby usually within like what is it 22 blocks or something like that on average but they're just they're, they're going nuts uh anyway <laughs> there are other bees like digger bees which are strictly ground type gravel and stone and then there's a mason bee which you may find these nests in reeds if you notice here there's like kind of like this uh darker spot in there which actually you will find bees in reeds and such uh finding them in bamboo and whatnot is, is somewhat common if you notice down at the end here we also have this which is a bamboo nest uh, at this time uh with the mod to my knowledge it doesn't spawn bees but you can use it as a bee hive of sorts if you so desire but maybe there are some more in the works i mean this is still early days for just about any mod like this uh, moving on we've got wait, uh, the mason bee which like i said can be found in, in ground uh, spots like this you'll find them throughout there's like sand dirt gravel stone etc uh, there's ashy bees which should be just found in the soft soils uh, then there's the leaf cutter bee which is found in most ground types chocolate mining bee which is just the soft soils again now some of these I could be slightly inaccurate with but more or less if you look up something like I need the chocolate mining bee to crossbreed to get the kind of materials I want therefore you can look it up chocolate mining bee and you've got a little face here instead of the spawn egg look at the face hit r or u for the recipe or the uses of it and you can see here it shows you that they prefer sand nests or are found from span uh, sand nests they're spawning from these things or you can click on here prefers dirt gravel and sand nests there you go you can see here uh, we've got sand dirt 
and gravel nests. And it shows you the different types that also like that at the same time, which is pretty darn cool. I do like this quite a bit, how it actually has some JEI integration. Without it, I don't think I would have been able to uh, get as far as I have with this bit by bit. But still, moving along. We've got tons of different bee types that can be found. These are your most common in the overworld that I just listed through. They look really cool. They've got lots of different color variants. There are plenty more that are not standard found around. As you can see here, there's, there's uh, where's one of them here? The dye bee. Yes, this one's a really good one. Let's grab the dye bee and I can actually just spawn a couple of these in. There's no harm in that. You can see they've got different colors of dye on them and such. They're really cute and they're just going to pollinate flowers and produce honey as well as comb and they will produce dyes, which is just really darn useful. So you'll find lots of them throughout the world. Not everything has a tooltip as of yet, but it may in the future. And I found that some of them will just move in regardless, like zombie bees and skelly bees or skeleton bees. If you don't have if you don't have any uh, of the hives lit or populated or just dark in, in general, if, if they're dark, then most likely one of these two, if not both, will move in to a hive. And by doing so, they're preventing other bees from gaining access. They don't actually fight or anything, which is kind of nice. But yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Other things you might find in the world, slime bees, which they actually like, uh, you know, some of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the lily pads here. And they'll also spawn these little slimy hives around, which is darn cool, uh, and they'll give you slime. Now, all these ones that I listed on the right here are plain stuff, and I wrote advanced because they automatically, without crossbreeding, like some of the other ones may, will produce you some kind of resource. Uh, so I've got a bee cage here. This is just to prevent any of these guys because I see one at the door. It's ready to bust a move. Get in here. Nice try. Nice try. And then I can release this. Or better yet, I can look at it. And you can see bee cage, slimy bee type, hive, productivity, medium, weather tolerance, none, behavior, diurnal, which means daytime. It comes out at the daytime. Now, you may see plenty of bees during the nighttime. That's because I overpopulated these so that uh, you would still be able to see them during this entire video. Otherwise, if I click in here, you can see that there it is full with slimy bees, full with slime balls. I put in one bottle in here. You can see you still get some honeycomb and stuff. This one here, same thing. I put in a glass bottle, but I haven't actually gotten any uh, in that one. And I put in one glass bottle in here and I got some there. So there is some chance, this isn't like I didn't fill this with glass bottles. I just put one in for an example's sake. But you will get some regular uh, bee byproducts as well as their uh, main stuff there. Now I think that they prefer the lily pad over the flower. And if you don't have the lily pad in here, I'm not sure how well they'll produce with the slime balls. But that is something to take into consideration. Uh, let's actually release that one. There we go. And when I release it, the the uh, bee cage is used up. But this this recipe makes four at a time, so it's good to have just a bunch of those around with you as you travel the landscape. Uh, zombie bees, they're advanced as well because they will produce, as you saw before, rotten comb. And if you're curious about this, this is like the first example I've been showing of something that is, uh, what do I do with rotten comb? Well, I mean, with honeycomb, I can make honeycomb blocks, right? Well, that is something you can do. Because it's the same here, you can make all sorts of different comb blocks with all the different types. And there is a lot of integration with other mods. So many <laughs> such that I, I don't have all of the resources in here. So, for instance, I think there's um, uh, bronze. I don't think that, yeah, there's, oh, silence mechanisms is in here. Okay, well then, radioactive. I'm pretty sure I don't have anything that generates radioactive stuff. But there's a radioactive bee. The radioactive comb block and radioactive comb. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy, the different stuff that you can get here. Hello, hello, radioactive bee. Don't don't kill me. Anyway, uh, let's continue on. I was talking about how there are different types of comb in here. If you look here, the rotten comb can be used to make comb blocks. But if you put it in a centrifuge, you can therefore get its other materials that it can produce. A rotten flesh, for example. Which, it being a, a, a zombie bee, it's probably something that you really don't care as much about. But if you look here, this is a centrifuge. Let me go around the other side. I went a little too far. Centrifuge, 
while working will spin. And in this case, let's take some, I'm not going to use radioactive, let's take some uh, different comb here. We'll take redstone comb. And we'll put that in there, and it will slowly over time start spinning and produce different stuff. Now, if I have bottles inserted up here, it will automatically bottle any kind of honey results down here. Otherwise, it has a little reservoir that holds somewhere around 10 buckets worth of stuff. You can see here it's got a quarter of a bucket, which put that in there. Boop, and I now have one honey bottle, which I can use for a light snack. Lovely. But otherwise, I got three redstone dust from that. It's great. Now, if I put a little bit more comb in here, let's put diamond comb in there. You see it actually has a little animation too, which is pretty neat. I like that. It's very nice. Uh, there's also a couple other things that were added in here, just some quality of life stuff. There is honey, which actually doesn't really do anything against you or for you, but you can get honey in a bucket just by adding four honey bottles in there and you'll get one of these. <laughs> and you can pour it on the ground. It's just kind of nice to have something that's like a golden fluid that's, you know, very, very pleasant. But let's move on. All these ones here, like I said, are all nesters. The ones over here may have other features or are special in some way. For example, this one here can be used to automatically get resources without crossbreeding. Same with most of the other ones down here. But they also may need requirements. This one requires an advanced uh, nest in order to go in. I have not been able to get it to go into any of the other standard nests. Uh, I think that's actually intended. They are in, meant to kind of butt in on other bees. Then we've got glowing bees, which, by the way, these guys here produce like bone meal. Uh, then we've got glowing bees in the nether. Yes, you can find these just floating around in the nether. Same thing with almost any of these bees. You can find them in the end, you can find them in the nether, you can find them in the overworld, just buzzing around. Over here we've got one of the nests that you might see in a set of glowstone. It's not that common, it's pretty rare. And I only put this in here for decoration just to rec uh, just for people to understand that this is the nether. This is not something that they actually pollinate, they use flowers. If you hold a flower, you will attract a lot of bees. Uh, most of them will try getting to you, so don't forget that. That's very important, especially if you want to switch out and nab one of them with your bee box real quick. Or, in my case, uh, a bee cage. I, I think it would be more appropriately named as a nuke, being a, <laughs> someone who actually takes care of bees myself. This, this is actually somewhat what it looks like, but most people won't understand and search for that term, so this works. Anyway... If we continue on, which these ones here, they're advanced because they require these in order to, or can be used to get glowstone comb or glowy comb and get glowstone resources. Same thing with these ones here, the crystalline bees, you can find them in like the nether uh, quartz ore, uh, you can find that there. And then uh, you can just kind of capture them, put them in here and have them just buzz around and get you lots of comb. It's pretty simple. And this is why bee cages are really important. Co moving on, we've got magmatic bees, which can get you some magma cream. You'll find <laughs> the little hives like this. Now, here's something. If you see one of the, of the bees buzzing around and you don't have a bee cage with you, if you see it go back into its nest, you can, gr you can then break the nest and take it back with you and then release that and they'll pop out of that nest. And you can use that uh, as a way of transporting them. But if they're not in the nest when you break it, then, well, it, you, you're not going to get the bee. And they may or may not go back into it when you place it down. Up to you. But anyway, that's just an idea. So let's make a day. Just so everybody can come out and see what's going on. There we go. You can see all the, uh, the magmatic bees are all fighting each other over this, trying to get it. You can get magma cream or magma comb or whatever it is out of there. We've got ender bees. I'm going to save those for the... For, oh, I guess we could probably do them now. Let, let's let's do this. Ender bees are the most difficult. Ender mites, ender bees. Yes, because, and I'll show you why. I'm going to go over here. That's why. Because, <laughs> let's try catching this bee. Here, I'll actually do this in, in right, where'd it go? Did I get it? I did get it that time. Okay. In the past, I've had problems where I've tried clicking on it and the bee itself um, buzzed away. So it's sort of like being shot by with uh, an arrow. So you might have some challenge in getting them back home with you. But apparently persistence pays off. Anyway, ender bees, they're advanced as well. You can get 
uh, ender comb, which of course gets you ender pearls, but they're somewhat rare to find in the end. Uh, you might find their nests more common in the outlying islands than you would on the main island, uh, and they will pollinate chorus flowers. Now, they may get stuck on there, and it takes them a while, so it's best if you can get a chorus flower that's low down like this without any undercarriage, because they tend to want their AI brings them underneath the flower for some reason. So if I release this one in here, close the door, it'll be like, ooh, there's a lovely tasty flower here, and then it's going to end up pollinating and going into one of the nests and dropping stuff off there, which is cool. Draconic bees. These are very rare, because as far as I'm aware, they... They only spawn. There's a zombie bee in there because I didn't have enough light in this area. Dag on it. This is the reason why you need to light up your beehives. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the draconic bees, they only spawn, in my experience, in the obsidian in the end. And the only obsidian there is there, by default, is in the pillars on the main island in the dragon arena area. So, yeah, and I only found like one of these in one of the pillars towards the, like somewhere in the, the bottom so there's a very rare chance of finding these guys it's not going to be easy but once you do they can create you dragon eggs now they will create these inactive dragon eggs uh they don't just poop one out or anything like that you, you basically have to make them from all the stuff you get draconic comb from them which is dr then centrifuged into draconic dust which then can be combined into draconic chunks combine a bunch of draconic chunks around an egg, you get an inactive dragon egg. Now, how do you take care of an inactive dragon egg? Well, first, you need to know how to get them to, to actually harvest this stuff and, and get you the the draconic chunks and dusts, or the dusts, not the chunks. That is, they need something to fertilize, and flowers or pollinate. They are not going to pollinate flowers. They pollinate ripe dragon eggs, not inactive ones, the actual one. So you have to have killed the dragon, leave the egg there, or set it down, and let them pollinate that. That's how you get these chunks. And then it will produce you more bits so that you can create more actual eggs. Inactive dragon eggs, on the other hand, require a little bit more. Now I have over here a bit of dragon's breath, and you know what happens when you click on an egg in uh, the end. It teleports to some random direction. I don't know where it just went. It probably went off the edge. Oh, oh. Is that it way down there? I think it is. There we go. Dragon egg. It is now a dragon egg, and then you'll have to, you know, remove it by uh, potentially moving it with a, a piston, or I think a torch will work. I can't remember in this case. Let me grab a piece of torch here. There we go. Now you can get yourself a real dragon egg instead of an inactive one. So you will have had to have fought the dragon, uh, won the battle, grabbed its breath, and used that on here. Now this one's going to try and get out. Let's get in here. Ha, nice try. I have a regular dragon egg now, so I can put this down, and then they're all going to be really interested in that. There you go, and start pollinating. It's pretty darn cute, actually, I have to say. And while they're all excited in there, let's just get rid of this one. Bye, B. There was too many in there anyway. Uh, so the... <laughs> That's pretty much a lot of those ones. Now, breeding. This is the main thing, because most of these bees are ones that you'll find naturally in the world. There may be some more uh, that I have not covered or anything, but I'm showing you the basics on some of this stuff. And let's actually make an iron bee. Now, iron bees, if you look here, recipe for that is an ashy mining bee and a crystalline bee, which an ashy, let's see, uh, I've got mason, Ashy bee. These ones here found in the ground in the overworld. We're going to need one of those. So we're going to open this up. Uh, I'm going to nab one or two of you. Close the door. There we go. I got two of you. Sorry. Uh, I only need one. And then we're going to grab the other one, which in this case was the crystalline bee. Oh, right. Which means we have to have gone to the nether and found one of these ones. So let's grab you. Thank you. And then we need to put them in a room together. This is the best way to do it. It's usually in an enclosed space, only because they could always fly away. Put this here, this here, and then we've got two bees in here, right? They've got flowers, they've got a, a beehive, it's great. So you take a flower, and you click on both of them with a the flower, and then they make the baby bee, and we now have an iron bee. Look at that, so simple. We can actually try and nab this baby bee 
it says BK Giant Beehive Medium Nun Diurnal. And most of these stats are, to my knowledge, not actually doing too much at this point to the mod. It may end up doing more later on. You may strengthen or weaken your bees, etc. But let's let's put this little baby bee back, and then they can all start pollinating. And yeah, it'll still do the thing. It'll go in here, come back in and out of the, the beehive. They are really cute and a lot of fun to mess with, and they'll get you resources. Now I have over here a little setup. If you notice... Let's click in here. Uh, the Advanced Oak Beehive I have in place, right? You can actually, just for uh, reference sake, pipe into it with stuff. Let's grab some bottles. And we're going to grab a stack of these, put them in there, and you can see that the bottles are going in on the side, just like that. And there's a bee in there right now, and the, item, the hopper I have right now is currently not functioning because I have a lever turned off. But, oh, there's the bottles that I was looking for. You can, which it did not drain it back out. It's just putting them in. I had those in there for this reason and I forgot. But you can turn this on and it will actually automatically drain out. There we go. Iron comb is in here and ready. So you could have that come out. You could actually have that go straight into a centrifuge if you so desire. And then drop it in. Get yourself your goods and you're rich. Now, if you're curious about this, you could look up a recipe for diamonds, right? And click through this stuff and you can see that there's a little centrifuge icon click on that and it says diamond comb then you're going to want to know how do i get diamond comb well you click on that and you see that you can make a diamond comb block or advanced beehives you can breed it from a diamond bee how do you make diamond bees you click on that with a lapis bee and an ender bee those ones that teleport around that are a little bit of a pain yes they will teleport through walls <laughs> um, but you can therefore take a lapis bee an ender bee and make a diamond bee. Ender bees are found in the world, lapis bees are not. So you're going to have to breed those. How do you breed those? With a redstone and a blue banded bee. Well, redstone bees aren't found in the world. Yep, yeah, glowing bee and chocolate mining bee. So there you go. That is kind of like the path that you need to make. Can you have multiples of these all together in the same area? Yes. Can they all share stuff? Uh, will they cross breed automatically? They will share stuff. They will not cross breed automatically. You have to do that yourself by clicking on them with uh, a flower, at least as far as I'm aware. There are no other breeding tactics that I know of, but I do know that there is plenty more to this mod that I have not covered, including things like, uh, well, let, let's look at like the withered bee. If you look at the recipe for that nasty fellow resembling skeletal bees, mood is definitely caused by the diet. Interesting, yet I have not seen any. Doesn't mean that they don't exist. Doesn't mean you can't create them, but there's plenty more to this mod, and I hope that you have been enjoying it so far, because I think that this is a fantastic version of magic bees from forestry being brought forward into a much more modern world of Minecraft. So if you guys enjoyed, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to come visit us on Twitch, and don't be afraid to spread the mischief. Till next time, folks. See ya!